If any of you have been watching my mention of the melon down the garden, it's growing, it's weighing quite heavily now. And I've been spending a bit of time on CW, it's really my favourite mode. Although I do operate SSB on a regular basis, I still migrate back to CW. And uh, to be honest, I can have a CW QSO exchange information far quicker than I could do if I used FT8. But there we are, that's, that's a bit of a political hot potato, I think, in amateur radio. Anyway, welcome back to the uh, channel, the Waters and Stanton video channel. I'm glad you could join me. And if you're new, you're most welcome. I'm going to talk about invisible attic antennas. You know, in the course of my career as a ham radio operator, I have had need to put antennas in the attic because sometimes, for whatever reason, I can't put an antenna in the garden. I, I know when I moved to one house, it was the quickest way of putting an antenna up. And another house, it was probably the best uh, option at the time. So, let's talk about invisible antennas in the attic. Well, first of all, let's look at the downside, get that out of the way, the downside of uh, an antenna in the attic. I suppose one of the potential problems is noise, particularly if you've got solar panels in the on the roof, because solar panels, although I think the panels themselves are fairly silent, the actual um, power supplies tend to cause a bit of a problem, so they can generate noise. LED lighting, you may have LED lighting in your house, that's another thing that could cause noise, and also any other uh, electronic devices you might have in the, in the attic. But, let's assume that either you haven't got that, or you're prepared to live with it. And if you're going to have an antenna in the attic, it's probably because you've got no other choice. So we'll assume that um, for whatever reason, you're going to put an antenna in the attic. Now, I'm assuming, of course, that uh, you have got an attic. Now, whether you live in a house or a bungalow, single-storey building, the attic is still a useful place to put an antenna. I mean, if you have a uh, single-storey building, the apex of the roof is likely to be around about 15 foot above the ground. And if you have a house, it's likely to be something like about 22, 25 feet above the ground. So you get useful height um, either way. Obviously the house scores a bit better because uh, you've got greater height. And if you actually go out in the garden, it's quite an education actually, go out in the garden and look at the apex of your roof and see how high it is, and then see how high a mast would need to be to actually erect the antenna at that sort of height. And bear in mind that if you erect masts down the garden, you can have a drop, you can have a sag in the antenna. If you, if you install an antenna in the attic, you've got no sag at all. You get that antenna at maximum height. One of the simplest antennas to put in the attic is a dipole. I think most attics would, could accommodate a 20 metre dipole because you can always fold the ends down a bit. So a 20 metre dipole is 10 metres uh, long, give or take, and you could drop the ends down one and a half, two metres. So you could squeeze a 20 metre dipole into a, a length of around about seven metres. And of course, if you bend it even more, if it means getting it in the uh, attic. And that will work quite well. But the downside, of course, is that you've only got one band. Now, I've seen um, hams that put trap dipoles in the uh, attic and it works but it's uh, a bit more uh, complicated and of course if you're bending the aerial around to get it into the attic it means to say that you can't absolutely be sure that the dimensions of a free space antenna are going to be the same when you put it into your attic. I've seen people use verticals, same thing applies. It will work, although a vertical is rather limited in an attic because the vertical space in a, an attic is rarely, rarely more than about six or seven feet, what's that, say about two metres, so that it is rather limited. I've seen people or heard about people putting G5 RVs in the attic. It's no problem except it probably doesn't work like a G5 RV because to get a G5 RV in most attics, you're gonna to have to do an awful lot of bending 
and the radiation pattern of that antenna is going to be quite distorted. The ideal antenna in an attic is a multiband antenna that doesn't have traps in it. It's very easy to adjust and it works very, very well on as many bands as you might hope for. The antenna that I've always gone back to in the attic, believe it or not, is a doublet. Yes, a doublet. It works extremely well in an attic. Let me take you through putting a doublet in the attic. First of all, the joy of a doublet is it doesn't have to be resonant. You don't have to have a resonant element in the loft. You can put as much wire as you can accommodate in the loft as the radiating element. You can take it the length of the loft, you can take it down one side, down the other side, etc, etc. You can get quite a lot of wire in the loft if you're prepared to bend it. And, as I said just now, it's not resonant, so it doesn't actually need any adjusting. That is a great plus point. Now you've got two ways of feeding a doublet. You can use the balance line 450 ohm or 300 ohm. I prefer 450 ohm ladder line. Or you can actually use open wire feeder um, or open wire balance line. And do remember, of course, that all this work can be done even if we're in the heart of the winter, even if there's snow on the ground. You can get in your attic and you can erect that antenna and make any adjustments you like. So, we've got our doublet element in the attic and we're going to feed it with balance line. How do we get that balance line down into the radio shack? It's actually quite easy. In fact, it's probably easier than coax cable. Because if you're, if you're going to put an antenna in the attic, maybe your property is rented or maybe it's your own property. But if you use balance line, you only have to drill two very small holes which are very easy to fill up with polyfiller if you decide to take the antenna down or you're going to move house, sell the house, etc. It's totally invisible. So what you do is you drill two holes in the ceiling to take the balanced line. Now, you must make sure, of course, that when you drill the holes you're going through the plaster and not going into a joist or anything else. Uh, I'll leave you to sort of work that one out. There are various ways of doing it. But you just drill two holes. You take your balanced line through those holes. In other words, if you've got the, if you've got, uh, the 450 ohm ladder line, which is probably the, the one that a lot of you will use, basically you cut away one of the plastic centre sections, and I'll, try, I'll just show it here on the, uh, on the camera. You just cut away two of those, uh, or one of those uh, plastic se sections, and then you've got two basically bare wires that you poke through the holes in your ceiling. You then take another 450 ohm bit of ladder line and you join it with electrical joining blocks. And there you are, you've got your ladder line going through the ceiling, two very small holes. And as I say, you can always fill those holes with polyfiller if you decide to move house. Now, the other joy of this is that you can take your ladder line directly to your antenna tuner you'll probably need an antenna tuner, an external antenna tuner, to uh, tune this, uh, or adjust this antenna, match, match this antenna. But the joy is you can take that balance line straight onto the terminals of your antenna tuner. How cool is that? It's not unrealistic that in many attics you could at least get 50 foot of element wire, uh, 25 foot either side, sorry I've slipped back into <laughs> into Imperial again, haven't I? Um, you could easily get, what, uh, six or seven metres uh, of wire uh, either side of the uh, the balance line. So in other words, you get uh, 14, 15 metres of wire, even more perhaps. Well, let's say you get 14 or 15 metres of wire. When you put that or connect that to your antenna matching unit, you'll find that you'll be able to tune it or match it rather on 10 on 12 on 15 on 17 and 20 meters and almost certainly on 40 meters on 40 meters part of the 
uh, dipole antenna will actually be folded back into the ladder line. But if you can get on all bands from 40 meters to 10 meters without having to worry about whether the antenna is resonant because that's the way a doublet works. It's, uh, it's, it doesn't need resonating at a particular frequency. It's a great way of getting an antenna into the attic. It means so you're not, not having to go up and down into the attic. And if you want to change bands, the only problem you've got is having to retune the antenna matching unit. And if you've got an automatic one, then it's even quicker. So that's the way that I found the best way to install uh, an antenna in an attic. It's the best sort of antenna to use. It's always worked for me. It's very simple. And apart from the fact that you do need an antenna mushing unit, it doesn't cost much at all. So, no matter whether you're in the middle of the summer or in the middle of the winter, you can get up into your attic and erect an invisible attic antenna. And you may want to even try that. Even if you've got antennas outside, you may, out of curiosity, want to do that. If you're bored one day, or it's teeming down with rain, or there's snow on the ground, you could get up into the attic and think, and think I'm going to put an attic antenna up just to see whether it works or not. Well, I'll tell you, it will work. Give it a try. There we are. So, as usual, thank you for watching this video channel. I appreciate the support you give to this channel. And I hope this particular video will give you some thought for uh, an antenna in the attic, particularly if you're lacking in space or if you're just curious to find out whether it worked or not. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio. You take care and I look forward to seeing you in the next vid uh, video. Bye for now.